if you're trying to keep it down. Particularly if you're in one of the um, email marketing services that where the leap is really big. Like some of them are kind of in more incremental, but then there are ones where like you have 5,000 and then you jump to the 10,000 tier and you're like, can we just do something about that maybe? So it'll keep your costs down, which is always very nice. Here are some signs that you need to scrub your email list. And that first one, I told you we we're going to talk about bounces. If your bounce rate has gone up, at the end of this, I'm going to give you like a tracker so you can kind of keep, keep an eye on all of this stuff in one spot. If your bounce rate is increasing as you go, you probably have an old list. People are starting to not just fall out of engagement, but their emails are starting to go dead. Um, there's two kinds of bounces. There's soft bounces and hard bounces. Soft bounces are usually not a big deal and they are remediable. Is that a word? Fixable. Um, so to get a soft bounce, it usually means that something was wrong with the server at that time, or somebody's inbox was full, or whatever. The email tries to be delivered. The receiving inbox says no, or there's the sort of something's wrong with the server. So just like at the server level, it's like no, and it bounces back to you, and your service will mark it as a soft bounce. Most of the services will resend to soft bounces, or they will at least allow you to send follow-up campaigns to soft bounces. And if something bounces more than a few your um, email marketing service will treat it the same as a hard bounce. So that's it. Hard bounces, we do not like. We don't have a here. I have crippling stage, right? So I'm going to drink. You're doing great. <laughs> Thank you so much. It is a real problem, though. Whew. Okay, so hard bounces, those we do not want. Hard bounces mean that that email does not exist, which is bad. Um, because obviously it did when someone signed up, particularly if you have like say double opt-in, then you know, they, they affirmed it at some point, but it's gone now. Um, it means that there's something catastrophically wrong with their whole server situation, which kind of isn't on you, but also you definitely gonna wanna make sure you're getting people like that off. If you get a hard bounce, your service will just cut it off. They will not send to it again, because it really hurts their, like I said, reputation and deliverability. You're all in this, Pool together. That's also a gross analogy. <laughs> but you're all in there together, so they want to make sure that everybody is doing what they're supposed to do. So if you have a hard bounce, um, that's a problem, and you want to make sure that you have as few of those as, as possible. You'll get the same sort of penalties. If you have too many hard bounces, you get an email from MailerLite, or MailChimp will just chuck you off, or whatever. The other problem with emails that go dead, and this is really important, is that sometimes they don't bounce. Because what happens is they'll be taken over, they'll be sort of reclaimed by whatever the the end, the, the service is, like Yahoo or Hotmail or whatever, and they are transformed into what's called a spam trap. There's two kinds of spam traps. There's spam traps that are made intentionally with the intent of catching people who are doing illegal or not cool things with their lists. So um, regulatory agencies will make a spam trap email that they never use for anything, but that they infiltrate into like lists of emails that are being sold and so forth. And they know that if you have that, you didn't get it the way you're supposed to get emails, which is by having signups that are consenting, and you can get big trouble for that. Um, but they also sometimes will take emails that have fallen foul of and sort of transform them so that they become spam traps, which frankly I think is unfair. <laughs> like. It's not great to not do list hygiene, but it's not really the same as buying an email list. So, but it is a thing that happens. So you, you want to be cleaning your list so that the chance of getting any of those goes down. This has never happened to me. I don't think it's like a common thing. I don't think it should keep you up at night, but you just want to be aware of it, obviously. Second sign is that your opening click rates are going down. Now, of course, um, open rates are, well, they were never all that reliable. Worse. Is everybody here aware of Apple's scale privacy protection situation? Okay, so Apple had, um, introduced a new sort of uh, email privacy protocol for their people last fall. Um, worth mentioning just in case, a lot of people are under the impression that this means that when people open, you can't see that they opened. But Apple has actually done something that's much more clever and diabolical, frankly, which is that when the email lands in an Apple user's inbox, if they are using a native Apple app, so the, the mail app on their MacBook, or the it's probably also called mail on their phone, as opposed to say downloading a Gmail app or logging in through a browser. If they're using a native app, which Apple absolutely 
pushes you to do and it's the easiest way when you buy an Apple product, then when your email lands in their inbox, Apple preloads all of the content, which means that they preload that tracking pixel that tells your service somebody opened. So basically, what you will see is that when you send an email, most of your Apple users will open right away. They didn't, probably. They're probably not on kids and people's way to get something and open it from you. So we do actually have kind of an inflated open rate depending on how your service provider is handling it. And the email marketing services are all handling it differently, so that's fun. Um, but for the most part, you will notice that you might have some somewhat inflated open rates. The good news on that is that if you do list hygiene, you do not run the risk of cleaning out a bunch of Apple users who are actually opening, because it's not that they look like they're not opening, it's that they look like they are, and they might not be. So one recommendation that I and all the other people who find this newsletter stuff super fascinating, we are so fun to party, <laughs> recommend is uh, go by click rates more. You know, like try to make your make your decisions based on click rates instead of open rates for the GM. Um, if you do want to decide something based on an open rate, do your best to segment and exclude people who are using Apple devices if you can do that in your email marketing service. So if I wanted to look at open rates and then draw some kind of data from a pool of people based on open rates, I would just exclude the Apple people. And I do love extracting data from people. It's one of my favorite things. Fun and parties, like I said. So, um, and if you are running um, automations that depend on opens, you might want to consider trying to have those rely on clicks instead. That doesn't mean you gotta have something in there to click, and it should probably be something super clicky, so consider that. Um, but that's a much better metric to decide who's actually reading your email. For the most part, your email service provider, if somebody is an Apple user and they open, don't worry if the baby makes noise, it's totally fine. Have a baby. If your person is an Apple user and they click on something, your provider will generally like understand that obviously that means they really open. So even if they're not counting them in your open rates, that's active campaign doesn't count them, depending on how you set it up, they'll move them over into that column once they've clicked, but it's a whole situation. But at any rate, you're just going to want to look at those metrics and at least keep an eye on are they going up or down, are they staying pretty stable, which is awesome. Um, and when they start to go down, what will happen usually, and it makes sense when you know the tech behind it, is that they'll start to decrease, and then it kind of exponentially gets worse as time goes on. Um, the reason for that is that the receiving provider, we'll say Gmail, they notice that fewer people are opening your emails, and that affects placement, and so then maybe your emails aren't going into the primary inbox, and instead they're landing in promotions, which means fewer people are opening them, which means that they notice fewer people are opening them, which means you get worse placement, and you see where that goes. So that's not good. We wanna make sure that if people are not opening, and it's really sad if they're not opening, simply because they can't see them, because Gmail's putting them in promotions, that is very sad. But we also don't want them hanging around doing nothing but dragging down the open rates. So we need to get rid of those people. Again, very sad. We're gonna rescue them before we're gonna just gonna check them out, so don't worry, we'll talk about that in a second. A third way to tell that you need to scrub your email list, this doesn't happen a ton, but um, if you have subscribers that are bots, if you're not using double opt-in, usually double opt-in will solve this problem. But if you don't happen to have double opt-in uh, enabled for one reason or another, um, you will see sometimes some junk signups. I would say, first of all, either consider double opt-in or get yourself a really good reCAPTCHA. The most recent version of reCAPTCHA does not make you like identify motorcycles or traffic lights or anything, whatever. Um, it honestly is behind the scenes and nobody has to do anything, but it can sort of see what people's behavior has been and it understands what bots do and what people do and is actually quite good. So um, see if you can get a really good reCAPTCHA or something. Um, or even a clumpy one where they have to identify the chains. It's awful. Like, I'm apparently I'm a robot because I can't do it. <laughs> but whatever. I'm constantly like, refresh, show me something else. Can we do the crosswalks? I know what a crosswalk looks like. <laughs> but if you have bot subscribers, they will show up because they just look weird. If you go skimming through your list and like 400 people signed up and you're like, well, that's not usual. And they all have, you know, Russian suffixes on their emails. That those are bots. If you go through and they all have just super weird names or repeating names, 
you have 400 new subscribers, but they seem to be sharing like six names arranged in different orders. Like it's, it's easy to see when something like that happens. First of all, just delete those. <laughs> and then I generally try to do some list hygiene just to kind of make sure everything's all cleaned up how it should be behind the scenes. Um, hopefully not a lot of you will end up with that problem with the, the bot subscribers. So those are some signs. Like I said, I'm gonna give you a, a link to um, make a track to copy a tracker out of Google Sheets and that will let you look at all of this in one spot. Because unfortunately with most of your providers, you're gonna to need to go in and look at each individual email to see your, your stats, at least if you want to see them really completely, which I always do. Um, so it's good to have them somewhere where you can just see the progression all in one place. Okay, so here's how you scrub it up yourself the right way. First of all, if all of this is like, I don't have time for that, <laughs> I won't do it, it sounds hard, I don't like it, whatever, I am giving you permission to simply unsubscribe <laughs> the segment that you identify as disengaged. It's that important to me. If you get to step three and do a re-engage campaign, I saw it called win back campaign earlier, earlier this year, and I just think that's charming, win back. If you do that, you will rescue some number of people from being unsubscribed because there are a non-zero, there is a non-zero number of people who open your emails and you can't see them for a variety of reasons. Um, the one that usually people say to me when they're telling me that they never do list hygiene is because uh, there's a thing called the preview pane in certain email providers. You can look at an email just by clicking on the subject line and it will show up in a different sort of window and a lot of times that doesn't load all the content and it doesn't get tracking pixel and we don't know that it's opened. Um, some universities, a lot of government addresses, uh, certain businesses will strip out tracking content before actually delivering the email so you don't see that those people have opened. Like this is a thing that happens and there are opens you can't see. They are not as many as you hope. <laughs> so when you look at your emails and your email stats and you say, well, I have a 25% open rate, but it's probably like 50 because so much people I can't see. It's not and I'm super sorry. But I've done this a ton and when I do, win back campaigns. This is for nonfiction, for fiction, for me, for my clients, for my students, across all genres, all list sizes. It's about one to three percent of people that get an email that says, it doesn't look like you've been opening, but click here if that's a mistake and you want to stay on the list. You get back about one to three percent of people. Now I want those people. I want all the subscribers, so I do it and I'm always really happy, but I truly the number of people is not big enough that I want you to not do it because it's hard. Just unsubscribe them. Totally fine. However, if you do want to do it, we'll talk about how in a second. Um, so the first thing to do is just a quick and dirty clean. Go through, search your list for things like gmail.com because <laughs> people signed up and they made a typo. Gmail.com. There's a lot of really common um, just mistakes that people make. I actually go through um, my unconfirmed from time to time and I just change the address up and resend to confirm uh, the confirmation email, which is the thing that you can do in active campaign, the resend part. Um, because people just mistype. It happens all the time and then of course they don't get the confirmation email. Um, well, I just like I do. Um, I'm not amazing. But just go through and see like stuff that just is not right, stuff that clearly doesn't look right. Look for weird emails that are typoed wrong. Find all those .ru ones that are clearly weird. Just to go through and anything that looks super weird, get rid of. Um, then you're gonna want to segment the list. Segmenting is not as hard as it might sound from saying that. Some of you are like, that's fine, and some of you went bad, and that's totally okay. Um, all that you're doing with segmenting the list is telling your email service, your email marketing service, that. You want it to identify for you the people who have not opened or clicked on, however it is that you're choosing to do it, a certain number of emails or all the emails in a certain time period or whatever. Um, that is something you have to figure out for yourself because it's totally based on how often you send and so forth. Um, but I generally tell people like, I don't know, 10 emails or every six months at least. You can do a little more if you want. Then there's always someone who says like, I do it every week and like, let's crazy because I certainly have plenty of people whose emails I haven't opened in the last week. So um, you don't want to segment it. And that's different in every provider. And I'm not, I can't tell you all the bells and whistles we need here until tomorrow. But um, first of all, they all have excellent videos. If you just Google or go to their customer service, you can also you know, chat or email them and ask them how to do it. You can join my Facebook group and someone will probably just tell you how to do it. 
Um, it's a little bit different for everybody, but it's basically just saying find the people who meet this criteria, and the criteria is hasn't opened the last 10 emails, or hasn't opened an email in six months, or hasn't clicked on in six months, or however you're doing it. So you get that segment, then you take that segment, and you send them an email or two, or in my case, they send three, um, which is the re-engage slash win back campaign. You're just trying to get them back. You're trying to identify any people who do open regularly, but it's not showing, or for whatever reason, just happen to see this one. They truly haven't been opening. And you want to make sure that you get them get them out of that segment before you go ahead and unsubscribe the people. So you can set it up so that they, you move them manually because they reply, or you can have them click something, and then your service you know, has some kind of action that does whatever with them. There's a bunch of different ways to do it, which again, with like 40 email marketing services we can't talk about. But um, again, you know, come to the Facebook group is the best way, even though I hate Facebook, I'm sorry to say that. Um, and join the newsletter, I talk about these things from time to time there as well, but not as often. At any rate, you're gonna do that. You're gonna email them. I send them three emails. The first one says it looks like you haven't been opening. I always blame this on the tech, and this is a step that I think is helpful, uh, but maybe not everybody can pull it off, just kind of acting a little bit to get out of tech. Um, and like, oh, the robots say, because I have occasionally sent emails that said it doesn't look like you're opening and people will reply and be kind of salty, like, well, I have things to do, or like, it's a whole situation, which is weird. Or they kind of feel creepy about being, like, tracked in that way, which I get, but I'm not, like, looking at you, I'm just looking at everything in aggregate, man. It's fine. Um, so I sent one that says it looks like you haven't been opening, and uh, I only want to send emails to people who want to receive them. I always want to explain that that's for their benefit. It's not like I don't want you around because you're not contributing, even though that kind of is what I mean. I never want to send emails to people who don't want them. So if you want to unsubscribe, here's a big button. Do that. If you want to stay, here's another button. Click that, and you're good to go. The second email I send just says, you know, I sent you an email last week or however often you sent it, and it doesn't look like you clicked on anything in there. If that's a mistake, like, reply and let me know. I also give them a click, because this might be the first thing they saw, and I don't want a million replies. Also, I could get a million replies. But um, just let them know. This happened, and if I don't hear from you, I'll go ahead and unsubscribe you. And then I send a third email that just says you've been unsubscribed. The reason I sent that one is because I want to include a link where they can sign back up if they want to. Because you're going to scrub a few people that would have said no, but for whatever reason they didn't happen to see the emails. So I send that third email that says you can sign back up here, or you can just follow me on BookBub or Amazon if you want to know when I have a new release. That's always been my method because I have attention deficit disorder and like 10 jobs. So I don't want to maintain two different lists. I feel like I will mess that up. But I am seeing people offering that they will maintain a release list. If you just want to know when I have a new release, click here. And then that will move them onto a different list that you only send to when you have a release. If you want to do that and you're the kind of person who can keep track of that, God bless, that's awesome. Anytime that you can keep people on your own real estate instead of farming them out is really important. That's why I'm always nattering more about newsletters. So if you want to do that, that is also a really good option for folks. In that case, what happens is you are only sending them the emails that they asked for. So it shouldn't be a big problem with deliverability or reputation because you're not sending them a series of emails that they don't open and they're just looking for the subject line that says like the new book is here. You only send them the new book is here. And then they've got a really high open rate individually and that's awesome. Uh, Gmail list is the high open rate. So that's your other, your other option. I was gonna say just all that makes sense, but we'll have questions at the end. So, we have Okay. Am I talking too fast? Okay, cool. <laughs> I do that. So, once you've done that, actually, just pop back. So, once you've done that, you've sent all those various emails, win back campaign, if you're going to do it, offered them releases, <coughs> any of that stuff. Now you've got this nice, squeaky clean lease. list. One cool thing is that your open rates are going to go up, at least for the next email, because that's just math. So, that's awesome. Um, the people who are going to get your emails are people who at least have been opening somewhat regularly over the last however many emails, and so you're going to have a pretty good open rate, which is very exciting. Good reward makes you happy. Makes your EMS happy, makes Gmail happy, everyone's happy. Then what you're going to want to do is get out your calendar and make a note to do this again in three months or six months or whatever it is that you've determined is the right amount of time. And when it pops up, don't just dismiss it. you got to really, really do it. Um, and that's kind of a hassle. I get that, 
It is also possible to automate your list hygiene, to have MailerLite identify those people and then check to see if those people have fallen out of engagement, see if you know anyone has fallen out of engagement periodically, and if they are in that segment, go ahead and put them into a win-back campaign, which you have set up as a workflow, and there you go. You can do it in an active campaign, auto, you can automate it in an active campaign. I do not know about the others, but I suspect that you can, and I'm hoping to kind of learn about all those so I can at least definitively tell you yes or no. Um, so do one of those two things, schedule or automate. Then you're gonna recheck your segments. I am an absolute bear about this, only because I have a, a warranted paranoia that I might have set something up wrong, that I might have made a click and when they clicked it, they, I might have made a link and when they clicked it, I don't know, they did a little thing that was wrong. So I go through and I spot check people. Okay, you know, 200 people clicked this, let's check five or six of them to make sure they wind up in the group they're supposed to. Okay, that's cool. Just go ahead and make sure that everything happened the way you wanted it to. You can sign yourself up as well and make sure you throw yourself into that segment um, and get yourself through that workflow. That would be really cool. Um, and then you can see if everything's working how it's supposed to be from the user end, which of course I always recommend. Um, you should test that before you send, of course, in case no one's ever told you. Send, do a test of every email that you ever send, check all the links, etc. Um, and then I'm going to want you to record the information in your tracker, your new information, because you're going to have a new list size, and the next time you send, you're going to have a different group of email all of that. I want you to keep track. Um, more on that in a second, as it says. So those are your, your follow-up things. You need to do list hygiene pretty regularly. Now the pushback I get from this obviously is, no, I'm sure that there are a bunch of people opening my emails that I can't see, and as we already discussed, no, there aren't. And there are some, there are some, but there are not, 25% of your list is like, I think well, that's just not how it works. I have actually, there are just a couple outliers who I was very surprised by how high that number was, but the win back campaign will solve that. That will fix that for you, so one good reason to do it. Um, but apart from that, I, I get a lot of pushback from people because they feel like they're going to unsubscribe all of these people who truly are engaged and so on and so forth. Give them that path back to you. That's that's the whole, like, let's, let's take this to its absolute worst conclusion. You do unsubscribe 50 people who would have wanted to know what was going on with you. If the last email they get says, you can just sign back up here, or depending on your service, click here to sign back up, and it's actually super effortless, or follow me on BookBub and you've got a link there. Like, if you give them that path to continue to get from you whatever it is that they want, you've mitigated almost all of any danger of unsubscribing people who are not interested. You are really worried about it. You guys work hard to build your list. You're paying for list builders, maybe, or you're like, you know, really pushing in the back of books, and you're writing a bunch of reader magnets. I love you if you're writing a bunch of reader magnets. And it sucks to unsubscribe a bunch of people. But the most compelling reason for me, or at least the most compelling proof, I guess, is more what I need. The most compelling proof for me that you need to do this is that all of the email marketing services tell you to do this. It is in their best interest if you have 40 million subscribers, at least on the surface, because you will pay them more money. So they are giving you advice that on the surface directly, negatively impacts their bottom lines. Have fewer subscribers. You don't expect that on a mail or MailChimp or whatever. They're seeing it because that short-term gain of getting more money from you every month because you have a bigger list is by far outweighed by the damage it does to their reputation and deliverability at the server level, and that's really meaningful. Like, companies don't generally ask you to give them less money unless you have a really good reason. So please keep that in mind when you're wondering, really, I really have to do this? You really have to do it, and it will be such amazing benefits for you. The people who are left are going to be really interested. They are going to be people who open a lot, who click a lot, who are probably buying on the other end of that click since they stuck around. They will reply to you if you're doing, if you don't have the person who's going to read your book, you should get it, and if you're doing the things that are in there to keep them engaged, there are the people who are going to reply to you and join your you know, group or whatever. Those are the people you want. You just don't want to send emails to people who don't want to get them. So, that's the final word on that. I have 15 minutes also, we can take some questions. So let me just give you these links. Um, those of you at home, hopefully you have the thing. NewsletterNinja.net slash advanced automation. It has a hyphen, which I'm annoyed with myself for doing, but it does. 
Um, I do teach this, essentially, but with more bells and whistles and buttons and levers. Um, in my advanced automations class, which is currently on wait list, I, we just run it a couple times a year. I'll tell you, spoiler, I'm not entirely sure it will go forward in its current form, but there will always be an opportunity somehow to actively do workshop stuff with me about list hygiene. So you can sign up there or you can sign up at the newsletter, newsletterninja.net slash newsletter. And of course, I always let people know when there's something new for you to do. And then, oh, it's just the same slide with a new link. Why did I do that? If you go to there, newsletterninja.net slash stats tracker, again, the live in, um, it, Google will ask you to copy right away. You won't be able to see it at first, but it will say, do you want to make a copy? And this will open up a tracker for you, which if I had any sense, I would have a screenshot of, but I forgot. And that will allow you to put in your the URL so that you can quick check it, you know, to remind yourself what an email looked like, the subject line, the preview or preheader text, if you have that, open rates, click rates, the whole nine. A whole, it's, I believe it's called like ridiculously comprehensive or something like that when you get to the page, and it is. Uh, delete anything that doesn't serve you. But the good thing about that is that you then have a column that will just show you exactly what your click rates are doing every month if you just keep up with that. And I don't do it every week because I do have time, um, but I'll go in you know, monthly and just fill in all of the information. That way you can open it up real quick, glance at it, and go, hmm, yeah, it is giving me time and do yourself some list hygiene or whatever. Even if you've scheduled your list hygiene, I'm gonna do it every six months, you know, peek in every six weeks or so and just make sure something weird didn't happen. Because if something weird didn't happen, you wanna mitigate it right away. Um, and if you have it automated, it's, the list hygiene is just kind of happening in drips and drabs as people go along, so that's actually kind of awesome because then you don't have to pay as much attention. You know that unengaged people are getting kind of purged, which is nice. Um, but if you're not, keep an eye on it. For sure. That's it. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Does anybody have any questions? Just come up to the microphone. If you don't, that's fine too. Okay. Tammy, I've got a comment. Um, when you mentioned the first newsletter ninja book, mm -hmm. Damon yesterday told us that there's something on his website, Book Funnel, mm -hmm. where they'll buy you that first book. I love that guy. Um, so, so check with like, he's, yeah. yeah, he's probably got a link in his presentation from yesterday. I bet so. he does. There's just nobody. It, Damon and David got their man. Like I would, I don't know what I'd have a job back in grocery for those guys. They're just awesome. Um, thank you for sure. Go to Book Funnel and check it out. He may also have. There's a second book. Like, this isn't an infomercial, but there's also a second book. He's Letter Ninja Two. If you give a reader a cookie, which is hilarious, and that's about reader magnets, so you can also check that out. They're all linked on the website, obviously, and maybe Damon's giving them away. You're on. Um, so I use that, um, God, I can't remember what it's called, where they like check your newsletter for like uh, viability before you send it out. Yes, like mailtester.com. Mailtester.com, which is yes. great. I highly recommend that. Well, I had last, a couple months ago, it like flagged my email is spam like my my usually mine is like a 9.7 or a 9.8 and it went down to like a 7 or an 8 and i looked and it like had subscribed me to like it was on some list that i was spamming or something i, I just want to say if that ever happens to you you can get off those it was not that hard they try to make it really complicated and scary um like with a bunch of verbiage and stuff my husband's in it and like i was like come help me <laughs> um but yes you can, and I just basically was like, I have double opt-in. I just like, wrote what I do, and I was like, but is that what you're talking about with the bots, or is that a different thing? The bots are like, I'm talking about like, you just get a ton of sign-ups. They're okay. just, I actually don't surprisingly understand very little about tech. It's all really history to me. <laughs> um, but just basically, there are programs that just go around and sign people up okay. for everything, and I'm not entirely sure. Of but is that bad. that kind of thing like getting on a, li a spam list? Is that a sign? I it's probably not see? great. Okay. Um, but it it may not have to do with this exactly. But it's obviously going to affect your deliverability. If right. Mail tester. Everybody. That's mail. That, see, they have a hyphen too. It's they do. Mailtester.com. It's got a hyphen. Mail-tester.com. Um, they will allow you to test three emails per day for free, and that probably is all you need. Um, if you go there, it's pretty clear what to do from the front page, but you're basically sending a test email to one of their sort of dummy emails and it gives you a report on your individual email. 
very, very useful to have because if there's a problem, it will flag it before you send a bunch of emails that get rejected. So that is nice. Um, it will also tell you things like if you don't have alt text on your images, which you should, and if your image has too many, or if your email has too many images versus text, and there's a bunch of stuff. Are you authenticated? Is actually great. Um, you can wind up on spam lists there, like blacklisted by spam house or whatever, and then you're like, okay, not sending today, and you go and start solving that problem. There'll always be links there that will tell you, like, go here and start solving it. And sometimes what you find on the other end is inscrutable, and you have to. Yeah. Leave. So marry someone in IT, or um, you can ask in the Facebook. Or group. Google it. Just real Google quick, it. marry someone yeah. in IT, um, <laughs> or Google it, or join the Facebook group or something, and just somebody can. Help you. So you don't think that's like an evidence that like, well, I mean, I know I need to scrub my list. But I like, don't think so, okay. no. Um, it can mean that a bunch of people suddenly started marking you as spam, but you'd also see that I don't, in your, in your I don't stats. Have that. Yeah, really? and that's so. the only way that it would be really in okay. effect. So that's probably just something super A weird coincidence. Okay, well that's good, but I will scrub it. So. But also do your list. Yes. <laughs> Um, I was curious if you had any of them to share about some of the major email providers and I mean obviously they all have their strengths and weaknesses. Um, <clears throat> I use ConvertKit, uh, hate MailChimp, tried MailerLite, didn't have a lot of success with it. I found the best success with ConvertKit. However, they do have weaknesses. I, if they have very limited um, segmenting in terms of like how, when's the last time someone clicked, when's the last time someone opened email. It's, very, it's basically just they have a cold list. And their cold list is open something in the past 60 days or not, and that's it. So, so they're they're very limited on specific kinds of segmenting that I wanted to do and found I can't do. They're really great with tags. Um, so I was just curious if you had any opinion on like ConvertKit, you know, versus I think you mentioned Active Campaign that you use versus like Kajabi or Drip or I've, I mean, do you have any wisdom to share on that? I don't know about wisdom, but I definitely. The answer to do you have an opinion is always yes. <laughs> um, so I do not recommend MailChimp for a variety of reasons. I don't like their actual architecture. I'm sorry, MailChimp. Um, the, the way that their architecture is built, the database architecture, means that you get double charged for subscribers. And the way that some subscribers, if they're on more than one list, the way that they've set up their, um, this is not architecture, this is just their choice, they set it up so that even if people unsubscribe, they still charge you for them because they're still in your audience and you can like run Facebook ads to them or whatever. Um, so you have to take an extra step of archiving and you unsubscribe. It's a whole situation and I'm just not a fan of it. Also, their automations are not very robust. They're, they have kind of automations and like a customer journey, I think they're called, and so, but they're super linear. They don't actually allow you to do a lot of like conditionals and if-thens and link actions and so forth. So it's nice to know that these emails will get delivered in a row, but if I would much rather be able to have people click and have things happen to them and have it ask questions to decide what to do with them. They can't really do much of that in MailChimp, so not a huge fan. Um, I do recommend MailChimp like a ton. Some people don't jive with it, and that's just... I just thought my open rate was a whole lot higher with ConvertKit than yeah. the same thing on MailerLite, so... You can definitely see that with this ConvertKit, and this is going to be the case with any of the ones that cost a little bit more. ConvertKit, ActiveCampaign, Drip, uh, Constant Contact, Infusionsoft, I can do this all day. <laughs> but the ones that cost more. Um, because they do have kind of better deliverability and reputation, just because that's not where kind of the scammers go. A lot of the scammers are hanging out on MailChimp and MailerLite because they're free tier, right? So um, the ones that tend to cost and maybe not have as generous a trial period or free you know, section or whatever, they just generally you'll have a little bit better open rates. Of course, if you have MailerLite and you, you know, work really hard on engagement and make sure you do your list hygiene and all that stuff, you can do very, very well. So I'm by no means saying don't do that. I almost always recommend MailerLite because I feel like it's where functionality intersects with being kind of affordable. A lot of you do not want to pay for ConvertKit or Active Campaign, and I don't blame you. I don't want to pay for it either, and that's why I moved all my fiction to mail their light. But Ninja has to stay an active campaign because it's super, super robust. I don't know a lot about ConvertKit, and I'm very interested in this um, segmenting situation. I actually have an appointment with a friend to learn he has ConvertKit, and I'm going to screen share it in December. So check with me in January, and I'll have lots of opinions, and maybe even kind of a workaround where you can do something that is not obvious or easy, because I do love to work around. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, I've, I've, no, I've got an active campaign, mm -hmm. and I've actually got it so that it segments into four different 
categories depending on what they've done. You just it's just all based on actions. Yes. So yeah, you can do that with almost campaigns. universally with um, every provider I can think of. Although there's always exceptions, the key thing to remember is that lists or groups or tags, you know, depending on what you're in, that they'll be called different things, or you'll have more than one of those, are static. You choose people and you put them in, or you have the system choose them and put them in, and they stay there, that's it. Segments are dynamic. You set conditions, I have five minutes, you set conditions, and then people move in and out of that segment automatically based on the criteria that you set. So they are super powerful. Um, Unfortunately, you can't trigger an automation on a segment in mail or light, so it requires a workaround to get all this automated, but they're really, really powerful. So I will learn about ConvertKit. Hang out in the group or join the list or something, and once I'm a ConvertKit expert, I'll have all kinds of stuff to say. Well, um, now I feel like really sheepish because I use MailChimp, so. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, you probably need to do some list hygiene. Yeah, yeah, so that's my question. So I've done list hygiene a few times, and um, there's an option to delete or an option to archive. So what is the benefit of one over the other? I'm really glad that you asked because I need to add it to this one <laughs> in case we do this again. Um, don't delete your subscribers. And I also get people who argue with me about this. Here is the thing, um, and I actually have someone in my group said that her mailing list, her email service, marketing service, when you delete a subscriber, they retain sort of just a little ghost of a bit of data about them that is GDPR compliant. One of the tenets of GDPR, really important, you know, there's like three important things about GDPR, and one of them is transparency. You have to be able to tell people what you did with their information. If they come to you down the line and say, I was subscribed, what happened? You have to be able to say, you joined on this list from this IP address, we sent you this many emails, here's how you acted, here's what we did, here's how we stored your email. You have to have that transparency. Um, and so don't delete people because then you're in an indefensible position if they show up with an email in hand and say, I never asked for this, give the EU 10,000 pounds, or euros, sorry, euros. Um, you don't want that to happen. Um, if you happen to have, I wish I could remember what service she said she had. If you happen to have a service that retains this information, that's awesome. Um, GDPR also has a right to be forgotten, so you'd have to delete it if someone asked you to. But otherwise, do not delete your people. Just unsubscribe them. In the case of MailChimp, also archive them. Because they will still charge you for the unsubscribes, which is a bummer. Um, Aweber is the same, just for reference, if anybody's on that. Aweber has the same architecture, and you can get double double charged if people are on two lists. Or triple charge, or quadruple charge, so don't do that. Is that everything? We're on time!